Hey guys, my name is Ryan DeLui, and this is my Lab 3 home video lab report. The scenario I chose to observe was a cue ball being hit across a pool table. I chose this because a pool table is a flat and relatively frictionless surface. Here is a screen capture of after I put in my video into Tracker and plugged in the data point for the cue ball during the set time. Now, the system in this scenario is the cue ball, so before I could continue, I had to find out a couple of pieces of data about my system. First was the mass, which equaled 0.17 kilograms. Second was the width of the cue ball, which was 0.0571 meters. I can now use these pieces of information to find my initial conditions. Finding the cue ball's initial position is pretty easy. It is just a position vector of where the ball was when I started the clip. We can find this by looking at the data point chart. Here is how far the ball moved along the x-axis. There are no points for the z and y-axis because the ball didn't enter those planes. Now we calculate the ball's velocity with the formula velocity equals delta x over delta t. Again, we take a look at our data points. We can choose any consecutive delta x with its corresponding delta t. I chose to use the first two data points. Now we can use all of our data to start computer modeling. Here is a copy of my code. This is the resulting computer model of my cue ball going across the table. Here are my two graphs. The red line shows the actual velocity of me hitting the cue ball, while the blue line shows Python simulation. My cue ball didn't have a perfect continuous velocity because it began to slow down due to friction. However, during the first second, my cue ball's velocity closely resembles Python's. This is because it is not yet showing the effects of the friction with the table. What would have happened if I had chose a different origin? The initial position vector would change because I would have a different starting position. However, velocity, force, and momentum would not change because the initial force was not affected and there were no other forces acting on the ball except for friction which we ignore. It is possible to say how many pushes and pulls are added together to give zero net force by observing the ball. We know that the net force in the z-plane is zero because the ball doesn't interact with it. The net force in the x-plane is also zero, because we observe only the forces that interact with the ball after the putter hits it. Since the putter doesn't keep hitting the ball, the net force in the x-direction is zero. The forces in the y-plane cancel out. We know this because the earth is continuously interacting with the ball via gravity, but the pool table cancels this force out and supports the ball. Thus, f-net equals zero.